Well, today we've got two jobs. Uh, we should have done one of them yesterday, but I wasn't thinking. We've hoisted the foresail back up without greasing the top bearing, so <laughs> I've got to take it all down again and grease the top bearing. But the other job we've got to do is this boom. Um, it's got some wear at the gooseneck, so we've got to get a wear washer and insert it into the, the gap just to stop this, this from, um, or maybe two washers, just depending. So we've got to measure the size of washer we need. Uh, we've got to take the boom off. That means we've got to take the split pin out and so on and so forth. It's not a massive job. It's not particularly complicated. It just has to be done. But um, the wind has picked up a little bit. It's coming from behind us. So I'm going to leave the foresail for now. And hopefully we'll get a lull this evening at sunset like we usually do. Um, dropping the foresail to do the grease will only take a couple of minutes. But this we can do because there's no sail on the boom today. And we're going to have to wait for the, a nice wind this time to get it on. Well, I've just cleaned the um, gooseneck and um, it's going to have to be a part that we're going to have to um, buy at some point because if you look at the one side, um, where the pin goes through is quite circular but if you look on the other side, it's more like an oval shape because what's happening is the pin is not going through at 90 degrees to the block it's actually starting to go like that and it's actually wearing got the inside um, away. So uh, we will have to replace this at some point. Who, whoever put the um, gooseneck on at some point didn't use enough washers and so there's wear on the bracket too. There's Exactly, there's wear on the brackets, we might have to buy that. But the thing is, we're going to just sort of like repair it with uh, a new washer for now. Um, but it is another item that's going to have to go on. We will have to purchase this and sort this out. They are easily replaceable parts. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we've just taken a bolt out and the whole thing fell apart. They're, they're just connected with, uh, in this case, this tiny little pin. So there's a bolt that goes through here and then this little pin at the bottom just keeps it in place. And it's held in the mass of four Torx bolts. Basically, yeah, that's it. So what have you been doing, Beth? Um, well, what we've done is um, we have greased the um, greased the gooseneck and all its fittings and put it back in. We've shimmed it out with um, extra washers and we have the new part on order. The main bracket where it attaches to the mast is in fairly good order. It is also showing somewhere just 20 years old. Um, if we have to, this can also be replaced, but I don't think we need to at this point, so we're not going to. Um, the new brackets are in order, we're going to fit the boom back onto the gooseneck and with a bit of luck then we get the sails up and the job will be done. Hallelujah! Well it's a bit of a different day on Salty Lass. Um, one of the joys of cruising is that there's lots of different days. But today we've been asked to uh, be background for some professional uh, filmers. So uh, we've got the dinghy prepped. Um, Beverly uh, has pumped it out of water and she's also put the engine on. So uh, hopefully with our dinghy prepped, we can be background. Well, um, at least now lots of dinghies are turning up. Um, but what we've had to do initially is say our name, telephone number, and the name of the programme. So giving permission uh, that we can be filmed. I think you need to move it on a bit. Uh, but anyway, lots of things are happening. So um, that's all for now. taken uh, part in a uh, TV programme and um, our boat um, that I was in um, had to go down the marina and then I had to climb a ladder and then I was supposed to run off and um, the guy who was skippering the boat kept on shouting at me run Forrest run and I'm like going oh. Not quite, not quite uh, like a salty last episode. <laughs> no, not quite like a salty last episode, but 
the thing is it was good fun but i've also talked to a few other people um so here are some of their experiences as they took pace in I can it is. it's actually a celebrity um chase or something is it i don't know but <laughs> so you've just been uh, part of the celebrity chase so where, where did you go with your little boat um well actually we went all the way to albert dock they was behind us, the actual celebrities was behind us. Then they, we went and stayed in the corner for a little bit. They come past, they got off and we mo moved on back. It was very good. <laughs> so you went all the way to the Albert Yacht? All the way, that's our decoy. We didn't get off, uh, another boat by us. They got off as well as the celebrities getting off. Oh, so you've just been in uh, the little chase. So what did you do? Uh, so we was in a boat that were split off from the rest of the group and we just went up to the next dock and we moored there for, for about 10 minutes, waited until things had looked like they calmed down, headed back, and now we've come back for breakfast. So what did you think of um, Liverpool, and what do you think of uh, the experience? It's been really great um, to get to know everyone around, you know, like, on bus and stuff. Like you were on a different boat, where did you go? Yeah, so we went all the way down to the end of the lock, and uh, we ran up away from the security cameras. So it was, uh, it was, uh, it was cool. Yeah, it was a really, um, it was, it was exhilarating experience to say the least. So Beverly, what did you do in the? Uh... Well, I had the uh, fugitives and uh, salty sausage, and um, it all went fairly well. Uh, there was a couple of mild moments of panic from them when they saw the ladder. They weren't really in favour of climbing up the ladder, I don't think, but <laughs> they did it, and that's the important thing. And um, yeah, it all went off well enough. I'm glad to say. There was a lot of chopping and changing. It was sort of very last minute. I didn't think, I thought we were one of the decoy boats, but then all of a sudden I wasn't the decoy boat. I <sighs> was on the decoy boat, wasn't I bad? I feel like um, our episodes are a little more organized ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days. The oil pump. Yeah. Never good news when that comes out. It isn't. And um, the other thing we've done is um, we've kept one of our empty um, jugs. Oil cans. Oil can oil bottles. So I've got to get that out as well. Which is in this locker. I thought you'd hidden it in the engine space. Um, so I had. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did, I didn't I? Ah, put that back there then. No, you don't need to remove that to do an oil change. I know, but I'm going to do it anyway because I can. Oh, you God. know, look, all my access to the engine, so much easier. Have you solved the Chinese puzzle of what to do with the step? No. <laughs> Central equipment is our new wonder torch. Oh, it's going to make life so much brighter. Glasses, because I need them. But one thing you've got to make sure you do is turn off your fuel supply before you do anything like this. Meanwhile, from our observation post in the engine bay, we can see the diesel getting changed. It's a rare event, this, and our camera crew has been waiting for months. You got it? That's it, it's cracking. Oh, so um, what do you think of the state of the primary filter? Uh, it's got a little bit of dirt and everything, but it's only to be expected. It's clear that the um, uh, cleaner that we use is doing its job. Uh, yes, it does mean that your fuel's that a little bit more expensive, but do you know what? If it makes your life easier in the fuels, I think it'll be great. It's not as it might make it a little more expensive. It doesn't make it as expensive as having your fuel tank taken out, steam clean, changing all the tubes, and possibly losing your engine. Correct. So you know you've got to weigh up your pros and cons. And no, you uh, don't. <laughs> it costs like twenty quid in the last three years. It does actually. Twenty pounds uh, is how long uh, for three years. So that's how long it takes us to go through it. Is it working? Yeah, what we found is that we listened for this sound um, because there's um, sometimes the cogs aren't in the right position. But if it's making this sound, as in the gluggy noise, the gluggy noise, then we know it's right. 
Now we filled the um, main filter. The bit at the bottom is full, so that <coughs> so it means that the primary main filter has got to be filled, and the secondary filter we've put in dry. Now you can put in fuel. Do you, do you think it would work better if I went and opened the um, diesel valve? <laughs> joking i meant to do it but you distracted me i think it would work a lot better if you opened the diesel valve you dafty well that seemed to go well it certainly did but uh we've just run the engine um so that's done two things for us first of all it's made sure that the fuel is running through the system correctly but the other thing is it's warmed the oil so now <laughs> You can do the oil change. So Beverly, uh, a question a viewer asked is, why do we not use the official um, oil um, extraction point? All right, down under here, there's a little tube with a black cover on it on this engine. This is an MD2020 uh, engine. And apparently it is the Volvo official oil extraction point. Whereas we go down lipstick with a big long thin tube. Now, I was told a year or two ago by somebody, never use the official one, because if you take the cover off it, it never goes back on again. And I thought to myself, yeah, okay. Uh, but I still use the dipstick. <laughs> um, since then, I've talked to two people I know, and they've both used this thing underneath. And one had oil squirting everywhere, and I think the other one did as well, or she simply couldn't get the cap back on. But uh, the people I know who've used this um, oil extraction points seem to have had a lot of difficulty. So we're going down the dipstick, assuming I can put the pump back together. <laughs> Come on, work those muscles, pump! Harder, harder, build up those pecs, do those abs. <laughs> yeah, this is my exercise for the day. Create a vacuum. <laughs> I know some people do that by just walking into a room. <laughs> so the oil filter situation. Are we environmentally clean or do we have the Exxon Valdez down there? We've got the Exxon Valdez down here. So the bag around the filter is yet another failure for about the eighth consecutive time. Basically, yeah. We've done it loads and loads of times and I can tell you now, I did a nappy sack this time very small bag but it's just just doesn't work no of course it doesn't work some design genius put the oil filter on the side of the engine it's going to spill everywhere no matter what you do yeah well i've cleaned the bilge and i've also just in ch uh, changed the impeller now on um a volvo uh, 2020 um it is very important that you get the right impeller. Um, one impeller is literally 0.1 millimeters difference in size, but basically, if you get the wrong one, it just does not fit. <laughs> so, it's the central shaft that it slides on is the problem. Yeah, and um, they're just slightly different because one's an imperial, whereas the other's a metric. And so always make sure you've got the right one, which is why we always keep a used impeller. As long as it's in good condition. As long as it's in good condition. Obviously, if bits of plastic are jumping off it, don't keep it. But <laughs> as long as it's in good condition, you can always keep it as you spare. But um, no, it's just very important to make sure you get the right one. After nearly a month in Liverpool, sorting out all sorts of uh, family issues and whatnot, and doing things to the boat, we have finally departed, and we're now heading. <laughs> and we're now heading up the Mersey. Um, Gainer executed a particularly beautiful spring manoeuvre this morning, and I will confess, I wouldn't let her filming it because of the third jibe syndrome that we had back in Southern Ireland a few weeks ago, where we did things perfectly, then we filmed it, and it all went wrong and we had so little clearance, I wasn't prepared to risk it, but it went absolutely spot perfect. 
So I put all that uh, effort into when I did the training for how to spring under engine into good use because I sprung on the engine because it was too tight otherwise. And you did an absolutely fantastic job of it. It wasn't too shoddy. It wasn't too shoddy. But yeah, exactly. And then you did it again in the lock. <laughs> but Bevy, Bevy, like I say, Beverly was like, no, I don't want to film, I don't want to film. That's not anger the sea gods. <laughs> no, we do not want to anger any sea gods at this moment in time. We do not. So we're heading up Queen's Channel at the minute toward the open sea. Uh, we haven't decided whether we're going to go on the whole channel or on the rock channel. I'm the Island Man, it makes very little difference. I'm going to the Island Man, so I want to go that way! Well, they're both fairly direct. <laughs> 